Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the live show. That's right, folks, live here on Twitch every Thursday at 9 p.m. We haven't missed one yet, and we'll never miss one in the future. Joining me this week, as always, the lovely Ian Gibson. You know what? I had a different cold open, but you're right. We've never missed one. You've tried to wiggle out of it multiple times, and I have been like, no, podcasts have to be every week, even if it's pre-recorded. Oh. A nightmare. Also joining us from the bowels of hell, it's Kyle. I almost called you Kyle Gibson. Kyle Bailey. Whoa! <laughs> well, I Whoa. haven't married. I haven't married Ian yet. It's it's on Not my to-do list. But would it? You know, honestly, I want your last name. I think Ian Bailey is better than Kyle Gibson. I see. I I don't like Bailey as a last name unless it unless it's like Bailey's Irish. Uh, cream i don't know it's so the first uh, name it's good okay you well, got good okay. irish cream just to let you know <laughs> so my, I don't my think i'm irish my parents I, don't think you are either. I mean no one no one can know for sure my uh, my parents got a golden retriever puppy and they couldn't figure out a name so my mom was like well let's just name him bailey i was like you're gonna name your dog your last name so it's bailey you know bailey what? That's so that's so lazy bad <laughs> that it goes back around to okay maybe that's a good idea. You just name him just, better Kyle. <laughs> yeah, he is, he is better than me. He certainly my, draw. I just call him Buddy. Call my him grandparents buddy. had a dog named Puppy because they never they never settled on a name, so they just so honestly. I'm not that's mad. Not at that. bad. That's a that's a good. Yeah, idea. it's so bad. It's good. Yeah, it's, the circle. it's so bad. It's good. Um, speaking of so bad, it's good, uh, folks. We're here to talk about video games, things that are bad and are not good for you. Yeah. <sighs> and that's the podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, no, it's just I I'm tired and I've I've lost my mind. So we just gotta go. I'm a little into intoxicated, it, you know? and I'm tired too. So let's just you know, let's call it fifteen yeah, minute I, podcast. <laughs> it's fifteen minute podcast. <laughs> I'm down. I did. I I only drank a little bit before this. Um, and I'm drunk. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, games I have played this week. I'll go about them quickly because they're quick and clean. Uh, Deep Cock Giraffe Dick is a game Karen and I play <laughs> all the time. It's also known as uh, Deep Rock Galactic. Uh, very fun game. We seem to get into it right before there's a new season. Uh, and this is the most I've ever That's played fun. Deep Rock. Um, I don't know why. It's just like I get off of work and I'm like, I want to go sit on the couch and play some deep rock i think it's because i've i've gotten more comfortable with the single player aspect of it so like there's certain missions you can just do on your own um really ranking up in the battle pass the halloween event starts next week and then the new season starts in november uh it's like i forget what it's it's plagues or something plague something i forget what it is but so i'm looking forward to that it, it'll be cool to try to get all of these uh stuff on the battle battle pass quote-unquote battle pass season pass uh before the um the next one comes out as always deep rock does everything great you rarely you don't pay for anything all of the currencies are in game you can achieve them all it's really nice there's times where i'm like can i just pay them money for this and they don't have options they sell packs for like uh wardrobe stuff but that uh is separate and I think those are the only things you can't get in game, but they just sell them separately if you want them. Mm -hmm. They like come out with every with every season. So, fantastic game, highly recommend it. Um, and then Citizen Sleeper, one of our game of the year. It's on the game of the year list for this year. Been playing it on the PC, really enjoying it. Uh, it's like every site you you play in cycles. You have these dice, all this stuff. Uh, I finally got back to it after being away for a while, and it's just nice to go through the cycles put your dice on the things, follow the little thread stories. Um, you get to the point where you're like, oh, I got low numbers. I know where to use these. So you like switch over to this other mode, use your low numbers. Um, and it's like one of the first games in a while where I'm like ready to like read through the text when I'm like talking to characters, deciding what I want to say. It's, it's a pretty interesting world they put together. So uh, I can see why Jake likes it especially, but uh, I'm surprised how much I like it just picking it up as opposed if jake didn't put on the list i probably would have never played it um so i'm, I'm kind of happy about that yeah um, maybe you should play um the other text heavy game i'm hearing a lot about this year is narco so maybe you should play i need to finish yes. that this that is, is very good right? yeah narco narco, yeah. narco? is is, is narco very good 
Uh, sorry, I'll look Norco. it up. Norco. Norco. I'm, I'm Norco. looking at it in my... Norco. Uh, oh, yes, sorry, that is Norco. another one I want to play. Um, yeah. And then I do want to get to uh, the new Disco Monkey Elysium. Island I heard was pretty good, too. Disco Elysium I've tried twice. I've gotten pretty far, but I've fallen off both times. I'll, I'll save it for Game of the Year, but I have a particular uh, hatred of text-heavy video games. It feels like a betrayal. Yeah, it feels like something I would be into, but every time it happens, I'm just I'm just not, yeah. you know? This is the first yeah. one that's grabbed me in a while, so. Uh, when I want to read, I'll read in bed, okay? Video games, don't tell you know, me how to read. Yeah, that's my argument. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not here to read, I'm here to play. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. I do have another oh. game, which oh. uh, I need to open Steam to see what the name is. I talked to you about it on the the episode we did not miss, uh, which was, um, it's almost like a, the, have you ever seen Unreal where they have the AI programming? It's like bubbles where you're attaching yes. lines to. So that is the video game, but it's a, what I is guess the it's name? an incre incremental game. I, I'm, I'm about to oh. find it. I'm about to find it. Here it comes. Get ready for it. It's going to hit you hard. Oh, did I delete it from my library? Wow, you it really didn't good. like it? Yeah. <laughs> no, it was a demo. Oh. Fuck. Did you play this, you play this on the Steam Deck? Uh, yes. No, I played it on PC. Uh, this was before, I think, my Steam Deck. Oh, it might have been here, but I didn't play it on it. Anyways, you are putting together these bubbles, so it's like one's the forest you put it near the forest it'll chop down wood and then they all lead in your storage you you send the your fuck we get to 93 episodes of this shit <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about i'm just describing the game uh hey you know so what we're better now he hasn't said rimworld or dwarf fortress yet that's so true. uh i did say dwarf though um but uh so you're collecting all this stuff in your storage and then as you're going along there's missions so then you, to unlock the mission, it needs like 10 bricks, four cases of beer. So you bring those in, you either make those to the mission or you bring them in from your storage. And then that mission opens up to a new sub world where you have a goal. Once you finish that goal, the mission back in the overworld exports that new thing back into your storage. So you're like working it's incrementally. Just like, link like link linkages. Yeah, so like you're working linking. incrementally, adding these stuff to the linkages. You can move them around at any point. Then you're What's going this game in called? to get stuff I really don't remember. This is um, not a joke. I, I want to look at this game now. Um, It's like top, bottom, but something. Top, bottom, joint very... slot machine. Is top there down a way steam? for me to see top, where top, top, bottom, steam, node, node incremental? Nodes. No. Is it called? Is, no, wait. Oh wait. I put it on my wish nodes. list. I think I put it on my wish list. Uh, date added. Master is... Plan Tycoon. Oh, Got it. Okay. Got it. As soon as you see this, everyone's gonna be so fucking excited. Uh, yeah. I mean, this look. This it's it's flowchart factorio kind of like. Uh, yeah. I see. I see. I see. Oh shit. This looks pretty cool, actually. I'm not gonna lie. Shit. Uh, I, I gotta open my Steam real quick. <laughs> it's pretty good. The demo's pretty long. Uh, it really? handholds you a little too much. Uh, but it's, it's not out very yet. Very good. I like the That's style my like a lot. No, but the demo's still available. But it's not coming out till next year. Wait, um, wait, 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 wait. It's called Master Plan Tycoon. Yeah. Yes. There's there's a normal master plan you can look at that I'm sure is very I, I saw that. What is what is that? It looks like what you're describing, Will. It's just called Master Plan. You can buy it right now for nineteen ninety nine. But it is an early access. Oh, maybe maybe this oh but this came out in twenty twenty. Is okay, wait a minute. Master Plan is developed by Solar Loon Games. Master no. Plan Tycoon is developed by Bureau Bravin. Are these who's the clone? Well, Master Plan oh, no, came wait. out in 2021. No, 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 no. Master Plan is a visual project <laughs> planning tool. It is a tool. It is not a video game. Okay. <laughs> Maybe somebody saw that and because it does kind yes. of look very similar to that. Yes. But but to be fair, like 
it is trying to emulate a project planning slash node based tool. So, uh, you true, know, true, 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 true. I don't think yeah. they're clones. They're just there is a tool and then there is an RTS based off a tool. Yeah. Okay. So yes, that was one of the Steam Next Fest demos I played, um, and I do recommend it. It was. It do was you like super that fun. name, Steam, Steam Next, Next Fest? Absolutely. I think it's terrible. Not. Yeah. Um, the other one I played w briefly was Capital Command, which is very much like uh, that game you played. That was like Battlestar Galactica. What game? Fleet. Fleet butts, fleet flyers. Uh, Nebulous Fleet Command. Nebulous Fleet Command. Capital Command is very similar yes. to that, but you do you play as one ship and you're like shooting around the galaxy Ooh, doing shit. This looks good. Um, I also enjoyed that. The demos I did not get to were the Pale Beyond, which is like a uh, terror Erebus Arctic Journey game. Uh, and then that other game I want to get into is Terra Invicta by some of the XCOM people that is supposedly a really good 4X. Wait a minute. But, uh, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Neb Nebulous Fleet Command. What about it? And Capital Command. The same publisher. <gasps> bum bum. We're uncovering... <laughs> A Isn't that kind of weird? Web of lies. <laughs> Isn't folks. that kind of weird? Like the games are so similar to each other. Publishers, like, yeah, let's get two of them. <laughs> Different won't. developers. Let's get two of them. Anyways, that's Anyways. what I've been playing. Those were the demos I checked out. Sorry, I forgot I was going to do that. Well, I think whenever last time. Uh, How's the Steam Deck? Steam Deck's great. I have put like one play session in with it because I have been so incredibly busy. Um, but I have also done a bunch of retro stuff on it. Um, nice. It runs Wii U games really well. Awesome. Uh, wow. And a lot of other stuff. So at first I was trying to use Botticera, which installs to the SD card, and then you can boot into that instead of the Linux. But I found that a little frustrating uh, to do. So I ended up just adding uh, the emulators and the emu station directly into Steam. So you can launch them from the Steam app. You can go to the Linux PC whenever and I actually had a keyboard and mouse connected to it and it was kind of nice the dock came in as well um so I realize nice. now I can just have a wireless mouse and keyboard and launch uh like any regular PC game and just play that with a yeah. mouse and keyboard um I do not like I knew this about me going in I do not like trackpad stuff with a with a mouse so like RimWorld was a little difficult even though it has a console port um <sighs> Well, honestly, there are a few I think, other games. I think my problem is it's it's not it's not the touchpad. It's that they want you to use your thumb for it, right? Yeah, that that's a little. And I and feel like for me, touchpad touchpad's all about index finger. You know, it's the biggest the thing thumb. is I my hand shakes. So when I go to click, it shakes the cursor away, and mm. that's oh. which they also made right trigger click for that probably that very reason but in the yeah. linux uh like desktop when you quit to it doesn't seem to register that so yeah. that is when i was running into it which is not a normal use case for the steam deck um, and there should be some they should be there should be some smoothing on that that yeah. you can solve that with software you know but i 100 percent, I, I need to put way more time into it i have had no chance that's why like i've been playing on my xbox because it's just i can sit down and play for 20 minutes and uh then go cry well so i mean you mentioned the dock you could have that pair with an xbox controller and now you basically have a pc tv set up very easily yes. yeah the the dock came yesterday i set it up today during uh well work. a video was rendering i was gonna say during work but then wow, it sounds like i'm not well, working but a video was rendering wow. and that's when i did it um i'm calling don't worry it was in between right yeah please <laughs> tell well i'm the ceo so um but yeah i'll have more to say about it i'm actually i'm on save data's podcast about the steam deck tomorrow and i'm like oh, i should probably play a little bit more so i have an opinion um but out the gate i'm liking it uh the thing is i just don't want to spend money on games so i'm just playing normal games and it's still working out um yeah. And, and again, with the accessibility, like people can upload controls so you don't have to use the base ones that come with it. There's like a whole community yeah. section for controls, all that jazz. I've been talking for too long. Kyle, tell me about the games you've been playing. 
You should have saved me for last because I'm going to be about 30 seconds. Hi. Um, Hi. I didn't, I didn't ask for this, but this is Mochi. Um, he's biting my arm. Uh, I played God of War for 17 minutes this week, so I'm a pretty good video gamer. Damn. Okay, I've not had any time to play video games, so I, I played before stream. Just thought I could say I played one video game this week. <laughs> Um, no, I, I've been working really hard, uh, at Rutgers selling ads, trying to get people. Yeah. I'm working just like Will is working, you know, while rendering. Um, uh, but yeah, God of War is pretty fun. Um, I said this last time. I don't know why I said this. I said, I didn't think the game was super pretty. It is pretty pretty. Like it looks, it looks very good. Um, I think, I think. It's something about like the lighting just doesn't look as lush as something like a, a Last of Us or um, it's a little bit more like of a hard edged kind of cartoon looking thing. It's, yeah. it's very strange, um, but I, I do like it. It is very pretty. And on the PC, it is definitely very fluid. It, it plays really well. So whoever I don't know, I, I don't know which company did the port or if uh, Santa Monica did like work on it but it it is like flawless i've not had any it, bugs or anything yeah and i think uh, that sony sony already has a really good track record with i think one exception being horizon zero dawn which was hot garbage when it first came out on pc all their other ports have been really good so i think that's that's pretty exciting that a console uh exclusive we that is released on pc from a from a, a known publisher you can look forward to it rather than being like oh, i don't know um, but yeah, God of War's fun. Yeah, I'm liking the story. Like I said before, uh, the boy is great. Uh, boy. And uh, what, what's his name? Who says Kratos? Boy? Teal. Kratos. Teal. Teal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teal. He's he's wonderful. He's fantastic as, as Gruff Dad. And uh, it's it's great. I, I recommend it. But I do need to beat it. I need to sink like a day, a solid day or two into it to beat it. But I'm, I'm excited. The, um, the performance stuff is really uh, great. Uh, when yeah. I had to run it and i mean I, I have a 2070 and i was running obs capture at the same time and it was like just fine like yeah yeah, yeah just play like it, it worked nice. so flawlessly and was running at a good 60 the whole time i was super surprised by that so it's good to hear that on your system too it, it's working well um, yeah i i have my gpu is just it's the super version of your gpu so it's like two percent better for six hundred dollars wow. more um and uh, I actually got it right before the GPU mining prices hit, so I like I bought it at the perfect time. Um, but I just recently upgraded my PC, as we said before uh, on other podcasts, uh, on uh, other episodes. And other this, podcasts. This, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean to. Didn't mean to let that slip. Uh, but no, having a, a much more modern CPU than my old one, which was like bumping up against eight or nine years old. Uh, it really does make a difference. More cores, people. That's what I'm talking about. I love more, more cores. cores. It's great. Um, how was how was the New York Comic Con? New York Comic Con was the first time I've been to either New York Comic Con or New York Anime Convention where it actually felt like a convention. It didn't feel like it was sort of like cut cut in half in some way with just like a lack of content being there or uh, it it wasn't overwhelming. I think Saturday is the best day to go because it's like all the super big, you know, releases happen on like Thursday, Friday, and Saturday it's just like, yeah, you go to enjoy yourself. And Sunday, I wouldn't recommend going because like people start leaving, like like vendors actually start leaving before. Um, so Saturday is mm -hmm. sort of like the sweet spot. But it was it was so much fun. I went with some friends. Um, I brought my camera this time, so I took some shots uh, with that, and just I don't know. It, it was it was a great time. The only thing was they had a mask mandate that zero people were following. Like they were just oh, walking, they were literally just taking their masks off as they walked through security. And I walked through security twice because we had to leave and come back, and they did not check my bag at all. And I had a pocket knife in there. I could have stabbed oh somebody. Oh my god! If I if I Oof. really really wanted to, I could have. You could have stabbed but... Chris Pratt's Mario. Yeah, I mean, I think the internet's doing that for me, but like, it just <laughs> should have. I could have, should have, would have, but I Today... did get to meet. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, no, go, go, go. <laughs> you know the memes that are going around where they show the candy and they're like, beware, someone's putting blah, blah, blah in the candy. Yeah, the like whatever. bar or whatever. <laughs> I, yeah. I suggested putting Chris Pratt's Mario voice in there. <laughs> People were like, I think that's too mean. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't think so. No. It's <laughs> Let's deserving. Let's do it. Somebody, somebody uh, animated Linda Belcher 
talking, like saying yes. those lines, and it, it just fits so perfectly. So Bobby! it's definitely just, Bobby. Go um, to the Mushroom no, Kingdom. <laughs> I did get kids. to meet um, Kevin Eastman, who's the co-creator of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and <gasps> talked to him for like a minute, and and uh, he was really cool. I took a selfie with him, and he he signed uh, my last Ronin uh, hardcover volume, which was great. All the creators were there. They, it, they did it for free. They didn't charge for signatures, which is like oh, unheard wow. of at Comic Con. They were just like, "Yeah, we'll be here for like an hour and a half. Just come by." And I didn't even know they were doing it. We literally turned a corner, and they were just sitting there, and we were like. Uh, is this allowed? And they were like, yeah, but they're closing in 15 minutes, but if you get in line right now, it's fine. <laughs> so it worked out. It was great. What half of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles did he create? Um, I thought he was co-creator. <laughs> no, there's four, though. There's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, there's four co-creators. Yeah. Yeah, either, he either did one of the four parts, or he did two of them. So which I, two? He, or he, he did, did all the, their legs. The <laughs> Mutant Ninja. Yeah. <laughs> he did... T mutant in turtle. <laughs> you you it's imagine a bad joke. an artist who just draws like feet and then passes it off, and someone else does the rest. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great, just drawing feet all day. <laughs> that sounds like one of those like artist challenges on Twitter, or or it's like I don't know. Do you ever see the the meme of like the the progression of drawing a horse? Where it's like the 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 yeah. back end is really really detailed, and then it gets to the front, and it's <laughs> yeah. just like a child's drawing. That's what would happen. Here's a killer app idea: social social app, where every each it, you draw a line that it tells you to draw, and then it sends it to the next person. And by the time it gets to the last person, you everyone together has drawn this awesome picture. And then when the last person finishes it, it sends it out to everyone. But there would there's... never be an awesome picture, though. Are they well, tracing something, or are they just they're tracing drawing something. a random line? They're tracing something. Gardic, gar, uh, Gardic.io, I think, does something like that, where it's like you draw a prompt, and then the person <laughs> has to draw what they think the prompt was for you, and it's it's like... Uh, oh, oh yeah, that game. That, yeah, it's yeah, like the picture, drawing version of telephone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've never had a telephone. That's better than and... Will's stupid idea. <laughs> Fuck off! That's a great idea. They're just Alicia, tracing. Clip this, clip so this and send this to be, NBC. It would just be a tracing <laughs> of a picture where all the lines are slightly off. Yeah, that's cool. You were part no, of it. It's not. You had to be there, like. If you did like chunks of a picture, like here is a single chunk of a picture, color and, and draw it, it however yeah, you like. Yeah, do something yes, like that. Then that's better. Look, See, we came I, up with an even better. 50%, Sorry, Halucha, clip that. Send that to NBC. 64. You send it to George. He takes care of all of our eyes. Oh, fuck. Oh, George. My, George? <laughs> uh, I, when I was... I He texted me on Wednesday last week, and he was like, hey, can I call you? And I was like, sorry, I'm busy. And I sent him the... <clears throat> I sent him the Twitch for Giant Bomb, and he texted back, my boy. And I later, I checked his Instagram, and he was like... He had, tweet, he had done a story about me saying, my boy moved here five years ago trying to get on a giant bomb stream and finally did it and i was like george you're gonna make me cry in front of all these people <laughs> uh, anyways piece of shit hate them that's nice um <laughs> george could get it done uh ian what have you been playing uh so i i did some traveling this weekend and uh it was flying oh. and one of my favorite activities when i'm flying is playing some <laughs> sort of some sort of like 20% attention span mobile game while listening to a podcast. Um, and so I've been playing a little mobile game called Flip Flop. It's basically solitaire, but it does something. It does something very smart. OK, you ready for this? It's very smart. It instantly makes solitaire better. You instead of having to stack the cards in descending order, as in you put a seven on top of an eight and then a six on top of a seven. It allows you to go both directions. So you can go eight, seven, eight, seven, six, five, six. And it makes the game easier, but it also makes it so much better. And I believe if I'm believing their advertising, it also makes it so that every time they deal. You are dealt a winning hand. It is possible for you to win that game of solitaire, whereas real solitaire is just a big old dick punch where they're like, yeah, this is hard as shit. And you're probably not it's, it's probably not even possible <laughs> to win this because of how we shuffled the cards. Um, so flip flop has that they have a couple different settings like um, like you can choose how many suits you want to play. And there's a really cool mode that I like where it's one suit, but there's five decks all mixed together. So it's like a big game of solitaire, but it's still one suit. 
and it's just it's just shout out to just a really cool free mobile solitaire game. Highly recommend it. I think I'm I think I'm getting into solitaire, but not normal solitaire because normal solitaire, like I said, it's a big old dick punch. Um, I mean, that's that sounds that sounds good. But does it do when you win? Does it do the Microsoft solitaire cards flipping out towards you animation that makes you feel like it does you... the it does the bounce you know where the, where yeah. it's like where it, it does like the whoop, 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 oh that whoop, one's okay and then it has like and it has a lot of i don't want to call them achievements but i mean i think it has achievements but who gives a shit on a mobile game it has a lot of stats so it's like hey you're on a 10 game winning streak this is the fastest you've ever won this is like the fewest number of turns you've used and it so it's it just it's perfect to just sit there and listen to a podcast so Sounds shout good. out to flip flop um, um i um i don't want to seem like an shut idiot. the fuck up i'm still talking no i just let me talk it's about your game I, sometimes you talk about games and you need the name of the game so you can google it and see what it's all about so i google flip-flop and oh <laughs> it's just a bunch well. of flip-flops <laughs> The other problem I'm is, an idiot. yeah, it's so hard to search for a mobile game based on the name because there's like a bajillion clones. So it's called Flip Flop, one word, capital F. So F L I P F L O P, and I play it on Android. I don't know if it's on. So look, look on it for the Google Play Store, yeah. and that should get you to the right one. I found it. Um, it was just I googled the word Flip Flop, and of course the app wasn't going to come up fair. first. No, anyway. actually, that's a good call out though, because. Like I like I do that every now and then I go on and I'm like I Google I'm like hey tell me what the top ten Android games are and people are like here's the game name and I'm like and they they don't give me a link to the Play Store because they're a bad website and I'm just like okay and then I go to the Play Store and I type that in and there's just like fifty clones of it and I'm like you motherfucker which one's the right one so uh, mobile app stores terrible ecosystems anyways um, the other game I've been playing is Overwatch two. I finally got to play the game because they they basically changed their phone number requirement and they fixed their servers. So um, I've probably played about two hours over the last week. Um, shout out to um, David and Jason from Save Data. They were kind enough to join me on Tuesday for Suffix Alive, where we played some Overwatch 2 for about an hour. I feel like the number one problem I have with Overwatch 2 is that it's Overwatch. Like there is just not enough there to bring people back it, e- even the extent that it's like free to play like i'm pretty sure towards the end of overwatch you could didn't overwatch one go free to play towards the end or at least it got down to like 10 bucks and and so the point is like there is nothing in overwatch 2 that is bringing you in if you were tired of overwatch or you were not interested in overwatch even the free to play mm-hmm. aspect i don't think is enough Honestly, I, I don't know if this is certain or not. I don't know if this is true. This is just my feeling. But if they told me that Overwatch 2 is running on the exact same engine as Overwatch 1 and that they didn't actually change anything, <laughs> I would 100% believe them. David. Like it feels it feels and plays identical. So it's one of those things where I'm just like like we complained about their marketing of it as a sequel, but it really it's not. It's just the exact same game with like a decent amount of updates to it. Um, so I'm still enjoying it. You know, it's been a long time since I played Overwatch. It was fun playing with David and Jason. You know, they know their shit. And I was like a little baby because they're they're calling out like CC and like, oh, it's Orissa. It's Tommy boy. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, they know all the <laughs> characters and stuff. And they're playing at like a better level than I am. So they're also calling out stuff. And I'm just like, I shot the guy, but he got me first. You know, so... <laughs> It's also it's also really hard. I feel like everybody in that game is very good now because, again, it's just Overwatch one. So it's not like people are learning a new game. They're learning the new heroes, but that's a very small portion of them. There's only and three. I'm, so, yeah. Yeah. There's only three out of like 30 plus now. So basically everybody already has their known heroes that they're very good at. And again, the game doesn't feel different at all. So they're just taking their expertise into the new game, new game yeah. in quotes. Um but which sucks because I, I have my old my old usuals, you know, like Lucio, Junkrat, etc. And uh, and I was like, oh, well, maybe I want to try some other characters. But it's hard to try that when you're just getting stomped constantly by people that have been playing the same character for six years. Um, even in casual mode, which I thought would not that there's a matchmaking rainy, but I thought it would at least put me with similar skill sets. Um, yeah. That being said, I towards the end of our stream, I did start playing as Ash um she's pretty cool she's kind of like the female 
McCree slash Cassidy, and she's got like a shotgun and a sharpshooter type thing. So she was dynamite. So she was pretty fun. And it, it always feels good when you play a new character and you're like, oh, yeah, this is clicking with me. You so I may use, play it some. You to use Bob. Yeah, Bob was fun. Although there Bob was, was this one, there was this one moment on stream, and it was so funny. Like, I had Bob. And I popped Bob and I don't know exactly how it works, but basically like your character goes like, go Bob, it's just like and a then, rhino, like it just goes. Yeah. Forward. And then it, but then it like pops in where you're pointed and then it stands there and it like it, it may move a little bit. But anyways, I did the pop. I saved data. Thanks for the raid. Um, hey. And I did the hey. I did the I did the pop. I'm glad save data is here because I'm about to expose myself a little bit. I had Bob Gross. and I and I just dream. <laughs> And I did the pop. It was like towards the end of the match, and I was like, "Bob, go. Wait, did you do the pop?" <laughs> and he didn't show up. And I was like, Aww. "I literally stood there for like ten seconds, going, wait, did he like?'" And I turned around. I was like, "Did he catch on geometry or something?" I was like, "Did he get stuck in the ceiling?" And then I think Jason was like, "Whoever's on the balcony, come help us!" And I was like, "I don't know where my Bob went." <laughs> <laughs> like I literally froze because I don't know if it was a bug or whatever. And I was just like, I was just like, what? where did it go? But anyways, uh, Overwatch 2, still a disappointment because they're calling it 2. But at the end of the day, it's more Overwatch. Well, no, it's it's not more Overwatch. It's Overwatch, which is still a fun game to play. <laughs> just with, but honestly, guys, I think no I just want to. I think I just want to go play more Team Fortress 2. I think that's where I really want to go oh. to the nostalgia. God, I never played. I would too. kill. I would yeah. kill for classic servers on Team Fortress Two. That'd be amazing. What do oh. they do? Do they have they changed it? Because I haven't been in there in like six, seven so, years. I mean, it's basically the biggest problem that I know people have had with it. It's just hackers. It's, it's just overrun with yeah. hackers. And I know Valve surprisingly oh. released some sort of an update to try and curtail some of that. Again, I haven't. Yeah. I've, I'm the same as you. Like I used to play. I got the orange box. I played that game. I thought that was going to be the game that I was like, I don't give a shit about this game. And that ended up being the game I played the most. And it was like, oh, my gosh, fresh Team Fortress 2 was so good. Uh, And And they 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 added so many good updates for years. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. But like, it's funny. The thing that really made me want to do it was in Overwatch 2, they added a new mode where there's there's payloads on uh, there's there's a single robot and whichever team gets to them and gains control of the robot the robot then pushes your payload so basically instead of like a single linear payload that one team is pushing the other team is defending you're kind of both pushing and struggling for control over it which is it's fun but it reminds me of this modded server i don't want to say modded server this custom server i played for like a month straight one server one mode one map and it was the cart payload mode from from team fortress 2 but they modded it so that it would go both directions. So it was a single track and it was a very small map with a couple turns in it, but these like 16 versus 16 and they're constantly fighting over the single cart and it was just a crazy melee and I loved it so much. So honestly, I kind of want to go see if that still exists in TF2 and, and play that. So great. Yeah, great game, great game ruined by marketing and account decisions and executive ideas. It's just, it's just a shame what they've done to Overwatch because at the core is still a very, very, very fun game. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's... It, it's just Overwatch with new content. It's not Overwatch Two. It's just they added exactly. some new characters and, and like a few new maps. It's yeah, weird. honestly, uh, I just real quick, no, I remember no. them saying they were like, "Yeah, like we're doing, we're using a new. I don't know if they said a new engine or an updated engine. It looks the same. It's it it's feels, exactly the it same. Feels identical. Yeah, I was surprised because I started playing, and I'm not saying I was amazing, but I was like, I'm not having to a- adapt to this game at all, and I'm like. Yeah this is the exact same thing. So like, like them going free to play is basically the only saving grace in here because if they tried to charge even a single fucking dollar for this, it would be an absolute ripoff. Yeah. I was going to say you telling me it's free to play makes me want to play it less. Yeah. I don't know I'm not, why. I'm not a big fan of battle pass stuff. I mean, I, I just, I don't know what's behind the battle. I think some of the new heroes and some of the cosmetics, but honestly, there's so much in the, in the free stuff there that you don't need to deal with that at all. Yeah. Yeah. I would honestly Um, rather go play Fortnite than Overwatch 2. And I, okay, that's ridiculous because Fortnite's, Fortnite's dog shit. Overwatch is fun. It's a, it's a solid game at its core. The best thing that they did with Fortnite was do a mode without the building. That's, that's it. And I played that and that's actually fun. You say that, but the shooting and movement in Fortnite still feels like dog shit. It feels like PUBG. 
Like it's just kind of like no. I think well, it I, feels mm, maybe it's slightly better than like PUBG, the but it's, the spread is so bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, yeah. uh, Fortnite sucks. Yeah, Fortnite's great. Uh, Roblox, uh, children. Uh, I would. I think I would rather play Roblox than Overwatch and Fortnite. I'd rather play that oh, that Roblox puppy birthing game. <laughs> that game was awesome. It wasn't even puppy birthing. It was just hospital. And I just it's happened crowning. to be a, Just happened to be a, um, Oh my god. It's time for the news, oh which means god. it's time to play the news theme by a man who is um you know he just is. Here's the news, it's gaming news. We're talking about news. What's up news? But now there's more to the song So you can sing along And it won't bore you though Unlike Factorio Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian And he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean But we don't want to have a vocal spat So let's bring it back to your local chat Yeah Speaking of Factorio I got very excited this morning because I think PC Gamer had an article and the headline was this new game is RimWorld meets Factorio. And I was like, oh, I got to tell Will, I got to tell Will. <laughs> um, but it was just like it was like PR. They're not even in a demo or early access yet. So uh, I'll keep an eye on it. But RimWorld plus Factorio, man, that's that's us, right? That's just that's us right yeah, there. That's us when we kiss. Yeah. We'll get that Irish cream. Speaking of Irish cream, I Irish cream this week because they announced new expansion for RimWorld. You thought I wasn't going to talk about it. You thought I wasn't even going to bring it up. Well, you're an idiot because they announced Biotech and it's going to be awesome. And I haven't looked when into it, it that When does much. it come out? Uh, October 2022, baby. That's this Man, month. I feel like the last one just came out. Am I crazy? Yeah, like, what, five, six months ago? Something like that? Yeah, but the one before that came out, like, 10, 15 years ago. So, anyways, Biotech, they're adding um, a bunch of stuff. Children in Reproduction, The Mechanator, um, Gene Modding. I haven't read through it all, but... I can I can see our viewer count going down by the second, so... I mean, that's... Oof. Yeah... Let's talk about Factorio, bring it back up. Anyways, RimWorld is a fantastic <laughs> game, folks. If you haven't played it, hit me up. Uh, I will show it to you. Did you take your clothes off? <laughs> what? Wow, you look different. What happened? I sat up. Are you sure? <laughs> oh, you want me to do my other cold open? My cold open that I didn't do? No. Oh, okay. What was it? Tell me about it. I was going to say that I'm just so proud of my baby boy. He did it. Nobody believed in him, but he did it again. It's Max for stop and baby two time world championship. So confusing. He didn't realize he was champion until like a half hour after the race ended. But he did it. He did it. Shout out to Red Bull. My brother oh, yeah. was very happy. And I was like, Max must have won. So. Yeah. And there unique. goes our entire viewer count. Folks, it's time for the news. Bye, uh, we're going to stop here. We're going to stop here. We're going to start here. <laughs> then we're going to stop later. Um, unless, yeah, never mind. Not making that joke. MetaQuest Pro ships October 25th for $1,500. Sorry, I'm reading that headline. <laughs> and and you thought the it. index was expensive. <laughs> Excuse this so me? This is so stupid. Uh, let me run down the tech specs here. Uh, I believe it is like, I believe the resolution is f like five or ten percent more than the Quest Two. It's barely more. Uh, it comes with inside-out controllers. So the idea is there's cameras on the controllers that are detecting oh, where the cameras are, just where the controllers are. By accident, <laughs> <laughs> we, we um, made them wrong. <laughs> it's 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 to deal with the issue where basically there's cameras on the headset that track the controller. So if you put them behind your back, sometimes they're like, where'd they go? Where'd they go? <laughs> where are <Yeah>. they? <laughs> but now they're supposed to be able to detect that. Um, and it's also it, I think the one cool advancement of it is it's using pancake lenses instead of friend stole lenses. So it basically cool. re reduces the depth of the headset by about half. Um, however, uh, by default, the headset has giant fucking light gaps around the lens 
like like to get the face seal is like an additional i think it's like a 50 dollars kit you have to buy after what? the fact I know. Um, it has full color pass through, which is nice. Pass through is basically where you look through the cameras on on the headset. So you get augmented reality and they draw stuff in the world and all that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it definitely has some cool tech on it that makes it better than the Quest 2, but it does not make it nine does not make it eleven hundred dollars more than the base version of the Quest 2, basically. Um, you can buy the the cool controllers by themselves for your Quest 2 for only $300 for just the controller when the Quest 2 itself is technically 400 but people are still playing it. So people are still selling it for $300. So this is just like, like I it, this is so weird because I feel like Meta, they're trying to make a Metaverse like a huge business thing, right? And so they're trying to make a $1,500 use case aimed at businesses this is just not enough good tech here to justify it as a business purchase. They're still kind of kind of marketing it as a consumer purchase and the metaverse is just a stupid idea. So this just, this just feels like them doing, you know, the whole idea in, in business where it's good, better, best. And you basically provide like a base option and a better option. And then like yeah. when, for people who are stupid with money, this feels like the stupid with money option and so you should basically just ignore it. The only thing that's interesting about it is that some of the tech that's in it may come to the Quest 3 down the road, but absolutely nobody should buy this. Like, like even, even if you are one of those people who owns a, a company that does like VR events, like you show up at somebody's birthday party or you rent out a warehouse and you do VR events, buy a Quest 2. Th this is just stupidly expensive. You could buy four Quest 2s for the single cost of the quest pro like it just it doesn't make sense it's literally just for stupid people to waste money it's it's ridiculous what what do you guys what are you guys thoughts on this uh it's owned by meta so don't buy it that's that's my official thoughts Man. also does it come with legs because they just announced those for meta they whatever, legs. So. yeah did you see the metaverse <laughs> had like 31 concurrent players or something sure. it's almost yeah. like 1.2 billion dollar game has 31 concurrent players i just they are messing it up so much like like they they are it's weird because on the hardware front the quest 2 is by far and away zero competition the greatest vr headset ever and the greatest vr headset on the market yeah. and yet they keep sinking so much money and effort and advertising into metaverse which is just it's stupid. It's a really terrible idea. And everybody keeps telling them that like this software community interface you're trying to build is God awful. There was an article out um, this week about how uh, for Facebook employees, uh, they got a memo saying that the metaverse is the future and you have to spend at least two hours in the metaverse every week from now on. Yeah. Like, like you have to use it. You're not using metaverse enough as a Facebook employee. You should be using wow. it for team meetings. And it's like, you built a God awful piece of software that doesn't make sense. And nobody likes it. Stop wasting money on that and focus on the hardware, you know, focus on your hardware and focus on your store, which is where you're making money because it's a semi-closed ecosystem. You know, that's where they should be focusing idiots that's wild um anyways uh hello check clip that send that to mark zuckerberg please uh, moving on to the next bit of news here uh youtube bans multiple vtubers for streaming adult videos in splatoon 3 <laughs> um that's, about i saw this Ooh, good <laughs> can one. you explain this for those at home can you explain the game they were playing <laughs> okay so they were playing splatoon 3 which is a game where you paint things on a color onto things. So these VTubers were keying out that color and replacing it with porn. Yes. Uh, which the is... one detail is it was the enemy team's color. So basically the game was not just playing Splatoon. It was I need to cover up the enemy's color <laughs> because I'm covering up the porn so I don't get banned. Because if I don't go, do a good incredible. enough job, I will accidentally stream so full funny, porn. Though. <laughs> yeah it's incredible and apparently like it kind of makes sense because apparently okay i'm sorry uh i'm trying to find the quote um uh okay here it is here it is uh quote this is from uh dexerto.com <laughs> 
According to reports, the VTubing group Sinsogumi would set Splatoon 3's ink transparent to zero, and then when they shot an opposing team's ink color, an adult video would play over it. Apparently, the video, as in the adult video, was one that VTuber Hinochun, one of the participants, had appeared in. So they had a porn star as one of the VTubers trying to cover up images of them in a porn film. God, this um, this is incredible. This is Splatoon. I was watching one four. of the clips, and it was very much <laughs> porn. Yeah, and they had the audio playing too, right? That's incredible. From the porn. That is a I, fantastic game idea. I, yes. We like Will and I have had we haven't had ideas that good, but we've had ideas close to that, and we just go, we don't have the balls to do that. <laughs> like we like there was a part, there was a moment where we said we should start an OnlyFans or a Pornhub account to do all of our like inappropriate videos. And then we were like, no, we don't want to tarnish the brand like that. <laughs> but we had we had a lot of good ideas. We're so this fragile. is incredible. Wait, wait until we can, you know, withstand some of that heat and then we can try it. Yes. Well, yes. it's just like a slippery slope because we start doing that on OnlyFans and the next thing I'm doing banging videos where we're just like <laughs> kind of touching each other and splashing water on each other and we're naked. And then we're just banging in like 10 years. People are still paying for it. It's just it's messy oh and i don't want to deal with that we don't yeah need but to get you've got you've got only fans money so you'll be fine yeah yeah that's wipe true, away but... your tears with hundred dollar bills yeah we need yeah. that that twitch hot tub money is what we need <laughs> <sighs> twitch the internet's amazing uh it. it is amazing it's a wonderful place where you can also be a uh, animated anime woman and try to cover up porn um, I wish we should do a VTuber local chat and just be that would be about it, but save data's done it, you know, yeah, that's uh, true. And they did it. They did it. Um, yeah, they moving did on to the, they did it. They, they, they did it. Yeah, it's flawless. Uh, next up, UK regulator details concerns over Microsoft's proposed acquisition of Activision Blizzard and Xbox responds. Um, if this is the story, I think it is. Um, it is very funny. Uh, yes. because <laughs> because hypocrisy uh, I think yes. is the big and I, 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 I irony irony is the word I almost said ironic I, I don't know um, basically this is more to do with uh, the Jim Ryan flying to the UK that's part of this still right yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, broad strokes, the CMA is the UK's like anti-monopoly, antitrust organization. And so the um, Xbox acquisition of Activision Blizzard King has to go through the CMA for approval. And um, essentially, Sony went to the CMA. They sent them a whole bunch of complaints. Jim Ryan flew to the UK to personally appeal to the CMA. And the CMA has now released a report that appears to just directly parrot Sony's concerns, including ridiculous quotes like, um, uh, quote, this could result in Microsoft harming consumers by impairing Sony's, Microsoft's closest gaming rival, ability to compete. And it's just like, yeah, it's about competition, you know, <laughs> like like literally like they're parroting these complaints that are just like, no, it's not fair because it's hurtful to their op to their opponent. And it's just like, yeah, that's how the market works, you idiot. Like they're like they're talking about like losing Call of Duty subscribers yeah. on, on Sony consoles. And it's like, yeah, OK. I, but then I think Microsoft responded. And didn't they say they were like, Sony has more consoles than we do. So, like, what, yes. are, you, what are you trying to And also they did the same thing with Call of Duty for like the yeah, past for... 20 years. Yeah. yeah. All these exclusivities, et cetera. So um, I'll, I'll uh, read from some of the some of the Microsoft. Uh, like you said, Kyle, they basically came back and said, we are not Sony's biggest competitor. We are third in the industry behind Nintendo for like for like uh, hardware and games. And there's all these other like take two, et cetera that are much bigger publishers than we are. And then they also said, um, uh, here's a quote. This is from, this is from Microsoft responding to the, uh, the CMA. 
Quote, nor is there any basis for the idea that acquiring Call of Duty could tip subscription services in Xbox's favor. Sony has chosen to block Game Pass from PlayStation, so it is not available on PlayStation. As all games that are available on Game Pass are also available to purchase, PlayStation gamers will continue to have the ability to buy Call of Duty on PlayStation. So there's a couple key things here. There's the bottom baseline, which is saying like, hey, look, these games are still going to be available for purchase, even if they're on Game Pass. There's also the bigger news of, if I'm reading into this correctly, and I don't think this is too far of a reach xbox tried to get game pass on playstation and sony blocked them and that's bonkers like we've talked about it before about how like microsoft has balls i wish they should do this and it sounds like they actually tried to do it and sony said no so damn (laughs) uh forgive my ignorance but i know how this um regulatory thing has been going through all the different countries and they're like getting improved and stuff so if it gets not approved in a country the whole deal is off or they just can't do business in that country i'm i'm not sure i i think part of it depends if they have studios in that country then it becomes material in a way as in like hey this studio is in the uk and therefore it can't be part of this deal because the deal is not approved um it could it could block it could it could result in fines if it's not blocked in that, you know, the UK finds Microsoft again, talking out of my ass here. I don't think it necessarily blocks the entire deal. I think it just adds extreme impediments related to that country, which gotcha. will, which will be more or less severe depending on ABK slash Microsoft's stake in that country. Cause so, I, I was wondering if like the country, sorry, just to finish my thought go for, uh, the, for the country, like if they're considering like, Hey, if we block this deal, how much money were you losing by not having microsoft and xbox in the uk like would that yeah. cross like, but i don't that's think I'm not uh, sure that's, that's kind of a nuclear option though i don't think i don't think either party would would want to yeah. go towards that so um if you go to the very bottom of the article that you link to there's a handy primer uh that game industry biz has put out so who are the regulators it's the ftc for the us um it's the cma for the uk and then the third main regulator uh, is the european commission And then it says, what happens if it gets approved in the U.S., but not the U.K. or the E.U.? The reason for these three regulators are so important uh, is that they have all the power to block the deal or impose conditions. In other words, if CMA says no, then that ruling may be applied globally. So, oh, oh. as used as as precedent in the others. Okay, gotcha. This this fucking guy reading the article like some (laughs) sort of Harvard (laughs) grad. Is that what they teach you at Rutgers? Yeah, sorry, guys. It was so (laughs) so hard for me to put... It's hard for me to put links into our show notes because number one, Will was lazy and didn't make the show notes. So I had to make them (laughs) yesterday or Tuesday. And number two, because there was the way this story unfolded was it was just a lot of like games journalists picking out like really good quotes and like interesting tidbits. But there was not a single article that said like, hey, here's the 10 interesting things. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So like, so I was like, oh, what are the good ones? Like there was a really good chart that I wanted to show that was literally like Microsoft responding and being like, look, here's Sony at the top of the hardware and like, and like, and like software sales and we're down here in sixth or something, you know, all these good charts of them basically like tearing apart the Sony uh, arguments. I, um, to address your concerns, Ian, I could have sworn I made notes all the way to 100 because I was like, oh, it's a good stopping point. But apparently I didn't. So I, you know, a heartfelt apology to you. Uh, and yes, kiss you later. Uh, yeah, it's, it's wild that deal. I feel like every time they bring it up, I'm like, oh yeah, it's still not through yet. Like I'm still waiting for Call of Duty on Game Pass. Please, I just want to play Call of Duty. Yeah, uh, same. Please, Phil so Spencer. It, it does say um, March 1st is the deadline for the CMA, which is the UK's regulatory body, and then the EU has to make a preliminary decision by November 8th. So, okay. gotcha. That's what. So hopefully, like. so call into the yeah. country music awards and make sure they they Barry approve Underwood's this deal. Uh, they just got to get it done. Yeah. Uh, now to the to the shit news as we like to call it. Um, sorry, it's the middle shit news. It's not top shit, not bottom shit. Uh, Ian, you ha- are very excited about this, and I don't know what to think of it because I don't hate my life. But um, can you we're gonna tell watch the folks it. about this? I was just going to say, can we watch this on, on Extra Life? <laughs> I want to. Oh, we probably could. We are absolutely going to watch. There is a lost pilot for an animated Kingdom Hearts TV show. Um, unfortunately, this this article that I linked to doesn't have all the details. What a shitty ass article. But basically, uh, 
like uh, I want to say, oh, 2003, there was an animated TV series in the works for Kingdom Hearts. And they went so far as to make like a like an animated storyboard pilot for it. And uh, the uh, I believe the one of the director producers on it has kind of come to light recently and started talking about it, being like, yeah, I worked on this project. I want to I want to share it. And he found the original pilot animatic, as they're calling it, and he released it on YouTube and you can go watch it right now. We have to watch this, right? I, like, I, we have to I watch scrolled this through the point. timeline and just gave me some good little thumbnails and... <laughs> Oh, there's some art in there that is a little yes. wild. Um, it's it's like between a storyboard and like a first pass of the sounds. I don't know so if this it's... will work for you, but nine nine minutes, 21 seconds, if you just hover over that on the time bar. Oh, my it's God. Like, it's great. <laughs> wow. I'm almost that there. is. Um, oh, that is. <laughs> Who is that? Is that Sora? Oh, it's, got, it's got some hair down. Ooh. Just woke up from a nap. Did I tell you that in the middle of my fever dream of playing Kingdom Hearts 2? You died. Yeah, I played the second one. <laughs> I, I, for about two hours, I couldn't stop thinking about how I would make a Kingdom Hearts live action movie. And I was like, it's doable. It would be very difficult to make it good. But if you just like lean full blown into the cheese and, and the over the top emotions of it, you could totally make a Kingdom Hearts movie that works. It's doable. Sora. I just want I want a David Fincher Kingdom Hearts movie. So I, I think what it, I want to see. I think it'd have to be like Mystery Men, where it's like such a ridiculous premise, but they take it seriously and that makes it endearing. But can Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross still do the soundtrack? That would be amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. That'd be so cool. Incredible. Uh, speaking of artists who make great music and great movies, John Carpenter apparently wants to make a Dead Space movie. Uh, now, normally, I would be like, you know what, John Carpenter, make what you want. Uh, or, like, make your own thing. But this isn't people being like, John Carter... Or John, fuck me. John Carter. Carpenter <laughs> should make a Dead Space movie. It's him saying he wants to. So I'm like, you know what, yeah. John Carter of Mars, you do that, man. <laughs> you do that. Well, yeah, just just this is a really good article on um, I believe it was AV Club that did the article with John Carpenter. And uh, let me see if I can pull up the actual quote real quick. Uh, basically, they're talking about Halloween series and then other stuff. And of course, it went to video games because John Carpenter is a cool gamer. Apparently, he didn't know that they're making a Last of Us TV show. And uh, they said that. And he goes, the Last of Us TV show. And they go, yeah, HBO is making it. He goes, are you kidding me? That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, and so they asked wow. him, have you ever thought about, have you ever thought about adapting a game? And he said, the only one I can think of, and I've mentioned it before is dead space. That would make a really great movie. I could do that. Um, so yeah, he's, it's, it's just cool when like normal successful people are just like, yeah, yeah. I play video games. Video games are awesome. Like when Matthew Perry was obsessed with fallout three uh -huh. and couldn't stop talking about it during late night TV shows. And it was is that like, why he's in new Vegas. <laughs> Probably, honestly. That makes I, a lot of sense now. I always wonder why he was in yeah. New Vegas. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's 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 just fun. It's like, you know what? Our hobby gets pushed aside and criticized sometimes. And on, it, I don't know if you guys have this, but like when I'm talking to adults, like let's say my coworkers or whatever, and they're like, so what do you do for fun? There's still that hesitation where I don't want to say I play a lot of video games because it's viewed as childish, but it's not. Yeah. I'm, it's normalize this hobby, baby. It's better than watching reality TV shows. You know, this is this is a solid hobby. Enjoy. My, it. Oh, yeah. my parents who do not watch this podcast are always like, don't you have to do that video game thing that you do with your friends? <laughs> and I'm like, it's always like with an air of displeasure. And I'm like, yes, mom, I do. Yeah. But yeah, right happens. after we finish doing our heroin and. I was like, I was like, you need to, you need to watch after Mochi in November because I'm driving down to Florida, and she was like, for the video game thing, and I was like, yes, mom, Are we for the charity. <laughs> yeah, I'm raising money for children, but she's Are like, you kissing any of these men? <laughs> What are you probably, doing? She probably, she probably does think that, but she doesn't ask me. That, so. <laughs> Listen. Oh. I um, I, I, this is exciting as someone who may have seen a little bit of footage from a certain remake this week. Very excited in the Dead Space sphere. So 
Uh, I will definitely uh, watch this movie. I also watched The Thing and The Thing prequel this week. So, you know, it's been a good, it's been a John Carpenter week. So it's fun. Moving on. And I can't tell. Okay. You moved your eyes. You you keep freezing. So I can't tell if you're frozen or you're just done. I'm done. Uh, We can wrap it up here. I don't want to talk about any of this stuff that's left here. Uh, They're making another movie about the game. Stop. Stock market saga. And the cyberpunk fucking novel. I tried Edge Runners. I couldn't. I couldn't get really? into it. Really? Oh my gosh! I thought it was real good. You get? I got like 15 minutes into the episode. So the thing that turned me off. I, I know, classic Ian. The thing that turned me off was they would have like 30 second dialogue scenes where they just pointed the camera like at the floor or like yeah. at someone's chest. That's very. That's very anime though. It's like very... yeah, but it's not like DBZ or yeah. Like this is this is the, a, there, there. There wasn't a money reason to do that, you know, as opposed to in old animes. It, it was this, it was a, it was an interesting choice. I could I could see not like it just it frustrated me. I was like, I just want to see these people talk. I don't want to look at your legs. okay. But look, look, you need to. So you didn't even finish the first episode. No, because it sucked. <laughs> I would I would say at least finish the first episode, maybe watch the second one, because at that point, it's like it's got your hook. It's got its hooks in you. And you're just like, okay, okay, I like these characters. I really like the style. I like what's going on here. It was like 1 a.m. and I was tired. So I I can see. Look, look, now the details come out. (laughs) I don't know. This is part of it, but I need you to know I'm not. It's not that this has nothing to do with Cyberpunk 2077, the video game. But it has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of that shitty video game. This is something uh, separate. Those so are disassociated. Like yeah. that that's okay. not the problem. Even though when I booted up the anime it fell through the floor of the game and it was weird. <laughs> and then it crashed. The fuck crashed that. your fuck TV. That. I don't care how good that I don't care if that game becomes a fucking Oscar winning masterpiece. <laughs> fuck that game. <laughs> Apparently it's not. I so, saw so I was listening to to Jeff Kersman podcast and he said he booted it up recently and within like 15 minutes he hit a bug that deleted all of his guns from his inventory <laughs> on like his 50 hour save. And I was and he's like, he was like screaming. He was like, how is this still happening? He's like, this game is what, two years old now? And they keep saying patch and patch. We patched it. We fixed it. And this shit is still happening. Like early like, on, oh God. early on, I could have rooted for a No Man's Sky type redemption. But at this point, No Man's Sky was already doing really well, like two yes. years later. So uh, but and not even No that. Man's it Sky's was, problem its- wasn't it had its quiet period where it was just yeah. like heads down, fix things. Then we'll talk about it. And this has just been like, we're doing out a patch. We're doing a patch. Here's a new roadmap. And they haven't to play, fixed it. To play devil's advocate. I do think any patches they release moving forward will actually help because they don't have to focus on last gen consoles anymore, which I know that was a really, there was a really big like part of their like, Hey, like we're sorry we fucked up. We have to make this game playable. And it, it now it, it like you can technically play it on those consoles if you want to. If you bought an Xbox yeah. a, a one S version of yeah. Cyberpunk or whatever it was, uh, I don't know. That shit was on I will say I'm yeah, not being reasonable with that hatred. That no, is no, no, because not, I felt not at all. Yeah, <laughs> like no, a no, normal no, no. person. You are being a hundred percent. This is the one game that you can be reasonable <laughs> and say those things. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I, I will defend Cyberpunk from a story perspective. I do think the yeah. story is very, very well and done. I, I won't I, denigrate for someone who grabs it, who starts it today and has a great time with it, because it's a yeah. different situation. Yeah, yeah. But. I, I, I'll, I, I toyed with the idea of starting a new, a new playthrough, but I think I just want to wait until maybe the DLC comes out. Or yeah. something. So, like, I like I, I thought about that too, but then I remembered like there's actually not a lot of room for like decisions and branching story the open world is just bad so it's not even like oh i'll have fun just dicking around yeah Yeah. and then i and then i thought about like the story missions that i would have to do and i was like well i really only like the handful of them so it's it's filled it's a game filled with architecture but not life like yeah like gta yeah see clip that halucha halucha Um, clip that's on that nbc (laughs) yeah fucking clip that (laughs) you piece of shit (laughs) <laughs> no, I love you. Sorry, <laughs> I was getting heated. I don't know what happened. Words came I'm out. Sorry, I regret them. I'm sorry. Um, I was uh. just gonna say the when I think about it, it's like I hated the menus. I hated the inventory. I hated 
like I didn't have fun okay, with any of far. the gameplay. Uh, I hated the people who worked on it. I hate their children. <laughs> oh, oh my god! <laughs> I hate their culture. I'll let you clip that. Send that. <laughs> I hate those Polish people. They're terrible. Oh, oh like wow, Kyle, Polish, that's so. just. That's I am Polish. Enough. It's okay. Damn it. Um, no, but Ooh, Bailey's it's Irish. Like... <laughs> I, my mom's side. <laughs> when I think about like. I've played GTA 5 like four or five times, and the story in that game's great, but the missions are fun, that world's fun to inhabit, like I just dick yeah. around and, and I end up finishing the game because I'm having so much fun, versus Cyberpunk, like, that game also just ended. Yeah. We're like, it was like just 22 into, like, hours build. long, yeah. it was so it was short so short. what it was. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, like, but again, anyways, I hold just, nothing against the people who worked yeah. on it. But but just just to bring it back to to the story here of how there's a new Cyberpunk 2077 novel. It's not a novelization, but it's based in that universe, the same as Edge Runners, and it's a full novel. It's not like a graphic novel or anything. I think this is their start of their way of doing the No Man's Sky. They're not going to spend the time to actually fix the core problem of the core game, Cyberpunk 2077, yeah. but they're going to have edge runners to kind of expand that universe and get interest in it. And edge runners was very, very good. They're going to have a novel to expand interest and get people excited about that world. They're going to have uh, Chasing Liberty, the new DLC. Maybe that'll you know tease people a little bit. It's all about building out cyberpunk 2077 outside of the train wreck of the first game so that by the time the second game comes you're excited yeah. for it and then they have a little bit less work to do still a lot of work to win back your support it's, as it's a video game. building yeah it's yeah it, it's of, of the brand overall not of the game so yeah, yeah I, and, I, I that's exactly what they're doing yeah and i'm happy with that because because it is goodwill branding from their perspective from my perspective it's world building in a very interesting world. I loved Edge Runners yeah. and I really liked the world building of it. And I'll probably read this novel if it has decent reviews because I'm like, heck yeah, I love I love me some cyberpunk novels. Tell me more about that world. Let's do it. And Kyle's right. Like the world building and the story and stuff in that game were the coolest parts of it. So yeah. like more of that, I'm totally okay with. Yeah. Um, as long as my main character can be a woman with a penis, I will continue yeah. to penis play too. cyberpunk. Penis too <laughs> there, there, is, there is part the of me that's breasts. like... <laughs> there's, there's part of me that's like we should really just do a cyberpunk rpg stream series you know part of me wants to tear open that 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 base tabletop role, role playing game and just be like what's going on here like they're doing a good job of of stoking interest in that world they just need to get the goodwill back in the video yeah. game space yeah yeah and I, I, listen i'll be first in line for cyberpunk 2 um i'm not gonna hold any of one no i won't be first in line I won't play that release date, but uh, I would take everything back. Don't, don't clip that. Don't clip that. Don't clip that. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not buying it until I see reviews. That's for sure. Yeah. Put it on Game Pass. I'll play it. I'll play it. Um, well, folks, that's gonna be the show. Let me hit the outro button. Oh, we were gonna talk about that, and then we spent like eight yeah. Minutes. It's good combo. Good combo. Yeah, yeah good it was work. a good. It's the natural conversation, unlike the forced conversation that I'm forced to do every day in this hell I live now. Okay. Uh, folks, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Save Data, for the raid. Thank you for the people stuck around, thus named Digital. Sorry, two Ds threw me off. Double Ds! Uh, Ian Gibson joining us this week, as well as Kyle Bailey and Mochi in the video version. What a cutie. It's a he, right? Yeah. Does your cat have a Hitler stash? Yes. Uh, I, he does, but it's, you know, more Charlie Chaplin-esque than Hitler, yeah. I think. Okay, all right. I, I mean, just, same I, ideals I as Hitler, tell. but he's comedy yeah. of Charlie Chaplin. Oh, he's definitely <laughs> yeah. a Nazi. I mean... Can you imagine Hitler so, as like a machine? Chaplin stash, Chaplin <laughs> stash, <laughs> Chaplin he's stash got, Hitler head. He's got like a, he's got a little soul patch. Like right here. Oh Would you goodness. kill Cricket Hitler if you had a time machine? Um, <laughs> folks, you can find our content at subpixelfilms.com. We'll bring you straight to our link tree where you can get sweet merch like our hats and our t-shirt and stickers. We got to come up with a new shirt design. Uh, I think, I think we... We have the ideas, we just haven't made the design. But I'm yet. also thinking Extra Life T, T Fury might might provide some good shirt ideas. It's a good well, idea. Good um, idea. So we'll see. But I also realized I can run all the Jackboxes off of my uh, Steam Deck if we want to do that for Extra Life. But I guess. Oh, no, you're doing two computers anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, folks, yeah. see you next week. Bye. Bye.